fans, El Stevo here with your first review of This Is Us in the last couple of weeks. The best washing machine in the world is our latest episode. It's 10 o'clock in the morning here in the UK. It's a lovely sunny autumn day, but it's very cold. Got my nice warm coffee, so we're all set to go. Excuse me. This week's episode, obviously, we're coming off, we're coming off a, a two-week break uh, due to the, the presidential elections in the US. I think I said in my last my last review that this is probably a good thing because this is really one emotionally draining show. It gets you in the feels, it grabs you by them and it pulls you and it pulls you and it pulls you and it drains you and it drains you until you've literally got nothing left. So the break was nice, but it's amazing to have this as back because it's such a beautiful show, it's so good. This episode centred really around the conflict in the relationship between Kevin and Randall when they were children, um, going into when they were teenagers, um, and even they're still not really um, as good as gold in the present tense. We had, of course, Beth and William uh, eating some uh, pot brownies and then getting stoned, <laughs> which was pretty funny. Very good acting. I'm sure that William uh, Cephas Jones is, uh, Ralph Cephas Jones, sorry, has had more than one or two tokes in his life, so uh, I'm sure he knows how to act being stoned. Uh, yeah, uh, we had the revelation, of course, that William had meet, met Rebecca and knew all about Randall and stuff like that, so Beth had gone absolutely apeshit about that. Wasn't so much Kevin, uh, sorry, Kate and Toby this week. Uh, they had a little bit of a... Uh, standoff really but she gave in about him eating binge eating he lost eight pounds uh she only lost a pound now i kind of understand the struggle that she's going through my partner um does slimming world uh she's not a massive massive girl I, I love her the way she is but um there's some weeks where she goes and she'll stay the same or she'll only lose a pound or half a pound but she, it really gets her down especially when there's people around her that don't seem to make any effort at all like myself and I, I can just drop weight. I'll, I'll put on weight, but I'll just drop it. Do you know what I mean? I'll quite easily lose eight pounds in a week, some weeks, just by pure not eating. Obviously, you couldn't tell by looking at me, but that's one of those things, isn't it? But she really takes it seriously, bless her, and Kate really takes it seriously, and she has all her meals planned out. And she, I see the comparisons with my partner, having their meals planned out and really starving themselves and not being able to have the things they want. Now, I'm really supportive in that sense that I eat ev everything that she will eat. Um, she does Slimming World meals, Slimming World lunch, Slimming World breakfast, and I will I will eat those Slimming World meals. Of course, I still have the sugar in my coffee because who the hell, well, obviously, who the hell doesn't have sugar in their coffee if it's black? Anyway, so I can see that struggle and it's real and it's really selfish. You guys who see my reviews know, sorry I'm rambling, know that I don't like Toby anyway. I don't think he's right for her, I think he's a selfish git. And this episode proved even more that he's a selfish git. Their basis of their relationship, which is a bit of a weird basis for a relationship if you ask me, is losing weight. Now, obviously, Toby is not really too too mad about this. Um, he got caught binging with his cool ranch, his pizza and his big bottle of pop. And it's just like, you're not supportive of your partner, mate. They go out for a meal and she relents and she has a dessert and he sits there and eats a massive dessert in front of her. And it's like, stop being such a dick, dude. Do you know what I mean? You promised that you're going to lose all this weight and you're just going out and eating. And she's she lets you eat it, says you can have a look at the dessert tray and have something from it. You man the fuck up and you'd be like, no, it's all right, babe. I promised you that this meal would be about standard calorie loss meal. It's a nice offer and I love you for it, but I'm not gonna have anything from the dessert tray because it will just drive you to as soon as you we've left each other, it will drive you to go and binge eat. And what happens? She goes to the garage and she buys the fucking cream puffs and she starts binge eating. It's weight loss 101. Woman who is paranoid about her weight 101. Don't flaunt it in front of her. It's common sense and I just cannot stand Toby. I just think he's a massive dick. And I just really hope that they don't end up together and I hope she finds someone that appreciates her for who she is and who will support her. Excuse my rant. 
I just don't like the way he treats her, and that episode today really drove it home for me. Just really drove it home. Moving on, obviously, Kevin and Randall, um, in the flashback scenes, they basically they hate each other. Kevin resents his brother for getting all, all his mum's attention. Um, Kevin has a big football game. Randall ruins it for him. They end up having a fight on the pitch. Now, sibling rivalry is another thing that we can all relate to, I think. And he, and anyone who's got a brother or a sister or a little sister or an older sister or an older brother, or, uh, you know what I mean. If there's more than two of you, I think, me and my sister are quite lucky there's only two of us. Me and my sister don't get on. But that's a whole other story. Um, there isn't that kind of rub, but even still we have... It's fighting for your parents' attention and it's... One will act out to get attention and the other will act out even more. You'll fight and argue. At the end of the day, me and my sister we were always like we were always like best friends, but now we we don't get along now. But through our teenage years and early adult years, we were. Whereas with Randall and Kevin, they've never really had that relationship because Kevin feels resented, resents Randall because he's black and because he's adopted, and he gets all his mother's attention. Randall resents Kevin because Kevin won't give him any affection. Randall craves his brother's love. He craves it. He will do anything for his brother to approve of him, literally anything. And this is what he says at the end. He says, I, I did, I did, mum did spoil me, but I lapped up her love like Pac-Man because I was missing the love that you, a brother, the love that you would give me as a brother, which I think is completely spot on. Because if, if you're a sibling and you're, it's a sibling rivalry, and you're not getting on, and you're not getting the love from your brother or sister that you think that you need as a relationship, as a growing a growing human being, you need those relationships to, to thrive and prosper. If you're not getting it from your sibling, you will seek it out elsewhere. And that may be to the detriment of your other sibling's relationship with your parents. It's if you're not fit, if you're not emotionally, you're, you're not getting it everything emotionally from your sibling, you will crave it more from your parents who will then give you it more and that will de de detract from your sibling getting it. So it's kind of a vicious circle if you know what I mean. Now obviously with them being teenage lads as well and adult lads, they don't, they're not going to discuss their feelings. It's all going to come to a head. And it comes to a head, they're out for dinner and Kevin finds out that Randall's never watched the Manny. And then they're running away, they have an argument and then we see that the new Manny is black and they have a fight and it's filmed and it's, it's funny. And then, at the end, Randall explains to him basically what I've just said. Kevin kind of gets a bit of a realisation that that sucked. And it turns out that Beth has moved Kevin to the basement and they sit and watch TV. And that's kind of a resolvement of their lifelong animosity towards each other. And you can fully understand why that relationship has gone the way it has. I would feel sorry for Kate in that instance because she would be kind of piggy in the middle and also for Rebecca because she would be stuck. She would have these two beautiful children that she loves equally but she feels that Kevin is treating Randall not well, not treating him with the love that he deserves so she's given extra and therefore it's detracting from their relationship and now Kevin resents that fact into adulthood. Family life is bloody complicated and I think everyone out there who knows about family life and who's got family, who's lived in big family, knows what it's like. And I think that's where this show really, really stands head and shoulders above every other show on TV because it handles those intricate relationships absolutely perfectly, in my opinion. Absolutely perfectly. Finally, we had Rebecca. She went for an audition. Her and Jack don't seem to be getting on very well. Uh, we had the, the little scene at the end with all the different washing machines over the years and then the, she was reminiscing. And their relationship seems to be petering out. But that will happen in a relationship. I'm trying not to come across all agony out today. But that will happen when you have three kids in a relationship. I think over time the kids need to become essential. And it's whether that couple can then reconnect after the children have moved on. But don't think that Jack and Rebecca are going to get that chance, judging by the fact that Jack's passed away and Rebecca is now with Miguel. And Miguel seems like a complete bell end. And I, I, I'm really quite interested to see how Rebecca and Miguel get together. 
obviously it's going to be a shoulder to cry on kind of thing, but I'm not at all happy about that because Milo Ventimiglia, Jack, is the father that I, I hope that I am. He is the absolutely perfect father figure. Um, he does everything right, he, he's selfless, everything's for his family, and I think that's the, all that a father can do really. Rebecca's the same, she loves her kids. Um, this show, overall, I thought it was really, really good. Uh, I cried a little bit when William said, he was saying it's nice to have Randall and the girls and Beth. And she said, is that good? And he says, mostly, but some, it's sad that I have to die. That that literally did make me cry. Um, but yeah, it was a really, really well-written, beautifully acted episode. And it, it was nice to have This Is Us back after the presidential elections. It's nice to sit and watch a show that isn't conflict and there's simple family conflicts that are day to day that everybody has and for me that is what we need on television something you can just watch and it's just like yeah i can relate to that i can relate to that i can relate to that it's just fantastic but that's it for me for now obviously welcome to the channel to my new subscribers i've got about 85 now fantastic my views have been going up i've had some amazing comments so please all you new guys subscribe pass on share my video subscribe um there is going to be a giveaway on the channel very very soon um i've been in contact with the creators of westworld to try and get me some free shit uh, there is potentially a dv uh, season blu-ray winging my way which i'm going to be giving to one of my lucky subscribers um it may involve picking a subscriber it may involve picking a channel mascot not quite sure yet haven't decided but it's coming soon so look out for that uh, just want to thank every single subscriber every single person who's watched my videos every single person that has supported El Stevo in the journey so far you're all absolutely magic and I love you love you all but for now this is us the best washing machine in the world really great episode see you on the flip side guys peace